Let's talk about the concept of complex baseband. First, consider a generic modulated signal. The signal is S of T. Here we see the modulation showing up as a carrier wave, sinusoidal carrier wave. It's actually split into two different pieces, cosine and sine, and that allows an, an arbitrary phase to be established. I'll call the cosine carrier wave C of T and the sine carrier wave C hat of T. Notice that sine and cosine are 90 degrees apart in, in terms of phase. We call the sinusoidal term the quadrature carrier. Quadrature is another name for saying 90 degree phase shift. This quadrature component then, or the Q component of our signal S is associated with the sine, and then we call the uh, the other one the in phase component. So that gives us our I and Q components. Now we can join these two sinusoids together as a single complex signal, where the cosine is the real part and sine is the imaginary part. For those of you who have had circuit analysis. This is very similar to the way you define complex power as being average power and reactive power combined together into one complex number. So we then call the complex envelope S tilde of T, and this is again formed by looking at the in phase and the quadrature components of our modulated signal. And the, the, the diamond above the equals is indicating a definition for each of these. Now again, let's think about our modulated signal S of T. We see that multiplying the complex carrier by the complex envelope gives us generally that, that notion of, uh, you can almost think about this as a, an, a generalization of amplitude modulation, where we have a, an envelope multiplying a carrier. I'll go ahead and expand these two complex quantities in the usual way here, just like when you're multiplying out two polynomials. Let me connect or collect the real and the imaginary parts together. And notice that even the, down to the negative sign, that this real part matches exactly what we had for the original generic modulated signal, S of t. So it would appear that S of t can be expressed as the real part of this complex product. The real part operation then extracts this real part here and ignores the imaginary part over here. At this point you might be saying, so what? What does this do for us? Well, it turns out that this so-called complex envelope contains all the pertinent information for any modulation scheme you choose to name, whether or not it's ASK or uh, PSK QAM, FSK, anything. And the nice thing here is that these, these two terms, the, the so-called baseband terms, are low frequency and there's no need to simulate at high sampling rates, as would be suggested if we were trying to simulate to accommodate our modulated signal. Because as you know, we need to choose a sampling frequency which is at least twice as high as our maximum signal frequency, which would be the carrier plus the signal bandwidth. So we'd have to choose something at least that large. So that's a big advantage for the complex baseband representation used by the LabVIEW modulation toolkit.